my mother had psychic experiences really since she was a child and through her teens and adult life, but she tended to ignore it. She wasn't too interested then. Obviously, she met my dad and, and they had me. So it wasn't till in later years she decided to pursue it and develop it further. Um, really, when I was about a preteen, um, I also had psychic experiences as a child too and was very interested in it as well. Cousins that, that were involved in spiritualism, in fact, an uncle was a head of a spiritualist church in Ayrshire. It was a normal childhood most of the time. Um, really, my dad wasn't interested at all in it, so my mother and I didn't really go into it too deeply. Um, eventually they divorced and really then I suppose she, she just plunged into it in a deeper way. But certainly as a child um, there were several psychic experiences, dreams, that kind of a thing that my mother and I had. Um, so throughout my childhood there were a few but it didn't develop until later yeah. childhood. There weren't too many scary things happening yet. That wasn't until much later as a child. It was more, you know, I was fascinated with the supernatural. I loved ghost stories, um, watching supernatural programs on the TV, um, ESP, these kind of things. Um, it wasn't until later on that the frightening stuff began to happen. Mm. By that point, we were both really well and truly involved um, as a preteen. My mother had already joined a, a spiritualist church and I joined it too and we went every week, a couple of times a week. So by then we were already involved in um, psychic development classes, um, mediumship training, seances, that kind of thing. We were already involved in um, seeking mediums for messages from dead relatives um, and really developing in it. We were interested in astral projection, astrology, meditation, yoga, you know, we were becoming deeply involved. So when the odd frightening thing happened, I guess we thought, well, it's just a hazard of the job. You're dealing with spirits, you're bound to get a few negative spirits. We didn't really question too deeply straight away. Um, we had communication with spirit guides. Uh, spirit guides tended to be, the way it would be described would be perhaps um, an Indian chief or some spirit that had just evolved high up in the spirit world that had come, had chosen us and had come to be our guide, give us advice, um, develop our psychic abilities, really be with us all of the time. Uh, they would also help channel um, apparent dead relatives. That's what they explained it to us. Um, whether it was our great gran, our sister, great uncle, whoever, um, channel them through and communicate with them. But yes, yeah, sometimes it would be the spirit guides giving her the information, other times it would be the relatives themselves. Um, I was more encouraged to take up the psychic art, which was, um, I didn't get too involved in it though, I started it and became quite frightening so I right. didn't pursue it but that was where I was encouraged to let a spirit guide take over my hand, draw the psychic art, draw the picture, the portrait of the spirit guide or even the dead relatives so of course if I was to give that portrait to a relative they would think oh yeah that's that's my dead granny that just looks like her and mm -hmm. it would make them think that this, the grandmother had come through to them. Mm -hmm. As I say, I started doing that and I started doing um, Kirlian photography, which is photographing spirits with infrared film. Um, but ectoplasm would start to form and really I, I got quite afraid of that right. and um, I just didn't want to pursue it. I thought I would go back to it in a few years, but um, I didn't want to pursue yeah. it any further. My mother did it was much more involved than I was. I was a pre-teen, so I was more involved in going out with friends and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, but she delved right into it. She um, would allow spirit guides to take over her hand and she would write screeds and screeds and pages and pages of so-called sacred writings. Mm -hmm. A good friend at the time, um, she was a Catholic girl, and she told me the, the Bible said you shouldn't do that. And, uh, and I asked her, well, why? But she didn't really know why. She just said you shouldn't do it. But the 
spiritualists just assumed, well, Christians are kind of narrow-minded. The Bible, it, you know, they didn't really believe in it. And some Christian spiritualists even said, well, they, they sometimes spoke to Jesus, that he was just a psychic, he was just a medium, and they sometimes channeled through Jesus. And, you know, it was all kind of mixed up. So at that point, I thought the spirit guides were truly who they claimed to be, and the dead relatives were truly who they claimed to be. Mm. As I say, if um, a poltergeist activity did occur, spiritualists would explain that in the sense of, well, sometimes you do get a mischievous spirit that manages to get through and that kind of thing. Most mediums and spiritualists and psychics that we knew were lovely, lovely people, genuine people, kind people. I think that's why a lot of them were attracted to that, because they felt they could help others, they could bring comfort to people, guidance, direction, you know, predictions about the future, prophecies, they could help people. Yeah. So it seemed a lovely religion to be in, it seemed, you know, helpful and everything like that. Yeah. There would be psychic premonitions and dreams, um, even about what would happen on the news next week, that kind of thing that would all be very accurate and, and, and come true. Um, there would be messages for people about their deceased relatives where you wouldn't think it was fake or a charlatan was involved because the information would be so accurate. Names, dates, places, descriptions of the deceased person, their personality, phrases they might use a lot. You know, you wouldn't think it was fake at all. Um, studying astral projection, reincarnation, just the whole host of New Age activities um, that, that surround that whole area. Really? Their faces um, and their body kind of a changed where their face would s subside and um, the dead spirit's face and features would, would come over. The, the, the change, their shoulders would change, you know, the whole shape would change, their voice would change and it would be just like your Uncle Bob who's been dead 10 years and you, you would go, oh, that's my Uncle Bob and he would speak, give you a message, that kind of thing. Yeah. To be honest, that scared me. I, d I only went to a few of those, but my mother certainly went to, to more because she was developing towards becoming a medium. She was going to all the development classes and she was coming on leaps and bounds. But um, what started to happen was she could no longer control the spirit guides. They were now choosing when to come through her. She could be I, w I was with her a few times at the shops, uh, walking along the, the street, and the spirits would come through her, take control when she didn't want to, um, and take over. Uh, really, they did it to such an extent where our life was not our own anymore. Um, at this point, she wanted out because there was so many spirit voices. They all wanted to give messages to the neighbours, to passers-by, to. It's just, you know, it was getting to the point where she didn't know her own thoughts anymore because they were always talking through her. Um, so she tried to get help from the mediums in church and, and other psychics that we knew. They tried to help, but it wasn't really helping. And we started to also, around about this time, heard rumours of lots of other psychics who were going through the same thing, even mediums who were trained who were having this problem or having poltergeist activity in their house and they weren't able to cleanse it or, t or to control it. Um, so that we started to get disillusioned with it then. So we thought, why now have our spirit guides turned against us? Um, they attacked my mother, they threw her about the house. Um, I was talking about shopping several times. She was picked up and thrown over cars, over the bonnets of cars that type of thing. The dead relatives, like apparently my grandmother and that kind of thing, had always been kind and given advice. Sadly, they turned against us and would shout obscenities at us. So it was, it was confusing as to why is this happening and is there another power actually behind? Mm -hmm. They're not really our relatives after all or our spirit guides after all. Really because of what was happening in the house, my mother was losing control and the spirit guides were harassing her so much, um, sometimes they would force her into a trance once the, the kitchen went on fire and she didn't realise it happened. The whole kitchen was up in flames because they had took her away in a trance and she, she didn't know 
she just didn't know what was happening. Um, so that's what made me question that I stopped going to the spiritualist church then, although I actually still believed in it because it's all I ever knew. Eventually I went to university. I was in second year studying psychology and a, a lady, a Christian, came alongside me, we became friends. And by this point, my mother was taken and put into the psychiatric ward because the spirit guys were telling her to kill neighbors and kill people. So the police were getting complaints about my mum. The doctor had complaints about my mum. Um, she, she felt she had to do it because the spirit guides were telling her to do it. So, but, but then it was obvious that her mind was so badly affected. So I told Susan this and um, she surprised me by saying that Jesus could help with this. Um, well, I hadn't read the Bible before, so I wasn't very sure at first uh, whether or not to believe her. But she explained that she went to a Pentecostal church where some of the members had been involved in spiritualism before or psychic phenomena before, and they had had horrible experiences too whether poltergeists or similar experiences. But once they became a Christian and asked Jesus into their heart, Jesus had cleansed their house where mediums before had failed to cleanse their house. So that was beginning to make sense to me. The more she said Jesus could cleanse your house, well, my mother's house was still haunted. My flat still was not so clear. Um, and then she said there's a, a a Christian coming with the gift of prophecy. Now that attracted me because as a spiritualist I was used to prophecies, yeah. gifts of predictions, yeah. uh, abilities to heal, miracles, all that kind of thing. And I didn't know that, that some Christians had these gifts. I just didn't realize that. And she explained to me, yes, um, Christians can have the gifts of healing, prophecy, tongues, miracles, signs and wonders. So as a psychic, I thought, wow, that attracted me. Um, so I went along because a prophet was there. Um, but obviously I heard the gospel and I heard about Jesus. And for the first time, I thought, gosh, you know, this, this could be real. And I hadn't really considered before, but it was real. That the presence of God was there and, and touched me for the first time. Well, that night I went home and I hadn't really looked at a Bible before, but strangely enough, that day before we went to the church, I had a Bible ready to take to a charity shop. So it was sitting at the front door, but as soon as I got in, I opened the Bible. And I was starting to get a bit confused because I thought, well, maybe Jesus is just a psychic. Maybe it's all just psychic phenomena. You know, is he really the son of God? Um, I kinda ha was kind of a bit frightened as well that night with the spirits because I sensed they weren't pleased I had been there. To the, to the Christian church. Um, so I prayed and I asked God, if Jesus is real and if he is the saviour, will you please show me what to do and what should I do about spiritualism? Um, I had a verse that was basically get out of spiritualism, um, which really did give me a fright because I suddenly realised what I had been involved in. And over the next couple of days, a few more scriptures came to light and really explained it all to me. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 Let no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist or who consults the dead. And it goes on to say these things are an abomination to God. So I got a fright reading that. And then uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 for such men are false prophets, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Mm. Mm. And I realized the spirit guides were not benevolent spirits, and the so-called dead relatives were not our dead relatives, because they did turn against us, they became evil. And it made sense, well, no wonder they suddenly turned against us and attacked us because spirits can impersonate any person who ever lived. They were masquerading as our relatives and pretending to be them. Just they were imposters, basically. Everything involved in the occult, I burned it.
mm -hmm. or destroyed it in other ways and just repented of it. Obviously needed to, to ask Christ to forgive me for that, cleanse me for that, um, have deliverance ministry for it, um, just have the whole past wiped out. It was easy to throw everything out and destroy everything because yes. when you suddenly realize these spirits are demons and evil spirits, you don't want anything to do with it. So it was easy to clear everything out, but the thought processes, the memories, the deliverance was more of a process and that doesn't happen overnight. But with Christ, you do walk through that and he does lead you through that. If anyone has dabbled in these things, you really do need specific prayer for that to be totally set free from it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think it'd be quite difficult to continue your Christian life without having that all dealt with and totally, totally be set free from it to really be able to grow and mature as a Christian. Also, when you were so used to dealing with spirit guides and getting advice from them, there could be a kind of a vacuum um, if you don't turn to the Holy Spirit straight away and seek Him for guidance and advice and comfort. Mm. Yeah. Laura. Thank you so much for sharing Thank things you, with us today. It's, it's been great and what a change has taken place.